Welcome to New Orleans Jazz National Historical Park's virtual performance series. The mission of the park is to serve the nation as a global leader in the dissemination of New Orleans jazz by enhancing and instilling a public appreciation and understanding of the origins, early history, development, and progression of this uniquely American music art form, jazz. The performance space contains, from left to right, Richard Scott playing on the acoustic piano, Ted Long playing electric bass and seated on his amp, Gerald French behind his drum set, and white drapery for the backdrop. Sit back, relax, and enjoy music of the Mardi Gras Indians. Well, welcome to our live stream here, and uh, this is Richard Scott and uh, the Power Trio. That's what I like to call it. Anyway, <laughs> we, uh, we're going to open up and we're going to do this song, and uh, this is a program about the Mardi Gras Indians and the culture of New Orleans, so we're going to do a a traditional jazz song that was written by my grandfather, Albert Papa French. And hopefully this will entice you to come to New Orleans, spend your money, eat good food, drink, and be merry. This is entitled, Why Don't You Go Down to New Orleans? Come on, Richard. Ted's here. I'm so glad oh, you could you. join us. Oh, God, you have no idea. I'm just glad to be. Oh, glad to be man. Included. Ted, see, I'm just glad to be in the service. <laughs> and, you know, oh, just man. in case the people watching the video don't know, uh, since we had the pandemic start in March, 
we really haven't had the opportunity to play together as much as we used to. We used to play together at least once a week. Yeah, every the three Sunday, of us. Every Sunday night used to be the Sunday night aggravation. We that's right, the time. Sunday night band. That's, that's right. right. That's right. We had a good time on Sundays. And uh, it's coming back. We're going to be back there soon. And uh, until then, we're glad you all are watching the video. Now. They're called Mardi Gras Indians, and uh, before I ever came to New Orleans, people told me about you got to get up early on Mardi Gras Day yes, and, and go see the Indians, you know. But they also they also have been known to parade on St. Joseph's Day, right, right, and, uh, right, on a right. Super, super Sunday, Super Sunday, right, right, right. So if you're coming to New Orleans, uh, you know, you ought to go see the Mardi Gras. That's right. That's right. <laughs>
It's Gerald French, y'all, of Mardi Gras in New Orleans. This next song is another New Orleans Mardi Gras Indian standard, and it's called Ico Ico. A lot of people have heard the version by Mac Rabinac, also known as Dr. John, but it was also recorded by a group called the Dixie Cups, and then before that, it was recorded by Sugar Boy Crawford. Right, right, the original recording, Sugar Boy Crawford. Yeah. And uh, yeah. it's, a, it's a neat song. It uses uh, some of that bamboola rhythm, an African rhythm in it that you might hear when we're playing it. And uh, I think we're gonna be able to entice Gerald to sing this one too. No problem. Hey now, hey now, it's been a while, but let's get it. Jack Wolfino and Nanny, Jack Wolfino 
There's a lot of interesting words in that song, words that you may not hear anywhere else other than New Orleans. Aiko, Aiko, Giacomo, Finane. And lots of times when they're playing these songs, people in the audience will come up and they'll say, what are you talking about? What, is, what does this mean? And um, I don't know the exact answer other than it's like a secret code language because one Mardi Gras Indian tribe might not want the other tribe to know what they're talking about. Am I right? Yeah. It's really a pleasure to have a, a real Mardi Gras Indian on the stage with me today. You know, a lot of the songs that we've been playing are old songs going back 50 years or going back 100 years. This song only goes back a few months because I just wrote it, but I hope you all like it. It's called Cha-Cha With You.
This next tune we're gonna do is another Mardi Gras uh, kind of standard, and uh, it's one that the Mardi Gras Indians have been singing for over a hundred years in and around New Orleans in the city, and uh, the Neville Brothers kind of really made this one really popular as far as uh, recording is concerned. And uh, this is a tune entitled Hey Pocky Way. So let's see what we get. I'm gonna let y'all start this one out. Gerald French to a Hey Pocky Way. What does Hey Pocky Way mean? I'm not going to go there. All right. <laughs> That's a secret. I'm not going there. <laughs> Today we're talking about Mardi Gras Indians, which is, you know, it's an amazing New Orleans phenomenon, but it's something, you know, some people might not know anything about it. And there are different, there are different Mardi, kinds of Mardi Gras Indians. There's different roles they play. Well, yeah, different different kinds and different tribes uh, from different parts of the city. But uh, uh, the three positions that people know the most about are more the traditional positions would be a spy boy, which is like a lookout. He's the guy that goes in ahead of the tribe and he looks to see if there are any other tribes coming or if there's any trouble coming or uh, if it's, you know, 
free for them to pass through and stuff like that. And then what he does is he relays a signal back to the flag boy. And the flag boy is kind of like the conductor on a train. He's the one that relays the messages. He's the one that tells the spy boy from the chief, you know, if it's okay to do certain things, you know, turn left, turn right, stop here, you know, we're gonna rest, you know. So all that stuff is, uh, it's a communication and we all, each gang has their own hand signal. So that's how we kind of communicate because normally we're, you know, six, seven blocks apart. So, you know, you can't sometimes verbally speak. So you have to use hand signals or uh, most spy boys will have a, uh, we have a spear or hatchets or something, something that they can make signs with. And the flag boy, of course, he has a flag. And the flag usually has the the insignia of uh, his position or the insignia of the tribe that he uh, represents. And basically, it's the line of communication from the big chief. So the big chief is in the back. He's singing and having a good time and getting his praise like all big chiefs do. But at the same time, He's running the gang, so he's telling them, you know, we're going to turn left, or we're going to turn right, or we're going to stop here, or we, you know, or if there's a gang coming, you know, well, let's meet them. If it's a gang he don't like, we're not meeting them. So, you know, it's all kind of stuff that goes on when you're on the street. Right. Well, let's, let's do the song, Big Chief. That sounds good. This is another long hair song, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, actually, uh, funny story about this song. It was actually, uh, it's a professor, professor kind of, Pinned it, but he didn't make the session, so Earl King's actually singing it on the record. Okay. Yeah, so I don't know what happened with that, but I didn't get that story. But anyway. <laughs> There's another story, I like this one, What's where uh, they were recording another version of it, and Fest was in the studio, and he was ready, he was warming up and everything, and he didn't really know the arrangement. Ah. I think, you know, Earl King or Tucson, or, they, they'd done this arrangement, right. and they had about, you know, 10 horn players on. Right, right, right. right. And, uh, and it, it, they had this massive sound. If you've never heard the original yeah. recording, you should check this out. It sounds out. like a big band. Like yeah, a, like it sounds like a big band. band. Right, yeah. right. And, and Fest didn't know that all this, all this was going to happen in the music. And when those horns just started blaring, it, they had, he, he like freaked out and they had to stop the session. And he had to get himself together again. He thought everybody was just hanging around. He didn't know they were all playing on the track. Ah, cool. Cool. But anyway, it came... We're gonna do our version of it, and we don't worry, we're not gonna scare you with any horn players. No horns. Here we go. <laughs>
Chief. Gerald French on the drums. Big Chief, yeah. Uh, this is another Danny Walker song, and uh, this is one titled Tutti Ma, You Big Fine Thing. And uh, I don't know much about this one, but uh, it's a favorite. The person that uh, really uh, made it popular again was uh, one of my teachers. And, uh, one of my inspirations, Mr. Herman O'Reilly. He started doing this song around town and uh, you know, made it popular again, you know. But Danny was a, uh, was a true artist and uh, he's become a legend, a local legend. So we're gonna do this one. This is entitled Two Tima. <clears throat> Shake that thing. Two ten mamas on the back. 
Of course, we're talking about Mardi Gras Indians, and, and if there's one thing you know about Mardi Gras Indians, it's that they have these amazing suits that they wear. And uh, in the old days of the Mardi Gras Indians, they were much more, uh, they were much more violent. And lots of fights would break out between the Indians. Little turf wars. And uh, they're very territorial, <laughs> that's right. But over time they began to to uh, to battle with their with their, their their suits, right? Exactly, exactly. And uh, it, it became a thing of uh, who was more elaborate, who was uh, who was the prettiest. I mean that's always been uh, since I started masking, that's always been a big thing, you know. Yeah. And uh, the way you achieve that is by creativity. Um, by sewing, and also you also create that by how much money you spend. <laughs> yeah, I, they cost thousands of dollars. Yeah, I mean, my last suit cost me about ten grand. Ten grand? Yeah, to make my last suit. Yeah. Wow. I mean, you know, um, you have to send me a picture of that. Yeah, I got. It. Yeah, yeah and really ostrich. Good. You know, ostrich feathers are not cheap. The ostrich feathers. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're not cheap. <laughs> okay, so uh, the Wild Magnolias recorded this song, and. Yeah. Uh, Chief, Big Chief Bo Dallas sang That's it. right, Big Chief. My so chief. Uh, we're going to do this one for you. It's called New Suit.
song was not originally a New Orleans song, but the New Orleans musicians claimed it as our own, and now it's a New Orleans song. They're all, they're all New Orleans songs the way we play them. That's true, too. <laughs> we can turn any, any song into a New Orleans song. Oh, man, I wish I, I, didn't, I didn't bring it. Did I bring it? What's your tambourine? No, I'm talking about the tambourine. I wanted the cowbell. Oh, the cowbell. You got to have cowbell. That's right. Yeah, I don't think I have it. Don't worry about it. We'll make it do. We'll make it do. All right. In the, in the sequel.
you've enjoyed our program, and we hope it makes you want to come down to New Orleans and hang out with us. I think that's a great idea. Yes, indeed. Yeah, you can look any of us up. That's Gerald French playing the drums today. Uh, we got Mr. Ted Long on the bass. My name is Richard Piano Scott, and we're going to keep on playing music in New Orleans as long as they'll have us, whether it's down in the club, down in the hotel, or... In over the, the live stream, over the internet. Or in the garage. Yeah, or in the garage, that's yeah. right. Don't tell them it's a garage, don't it's a secret. Them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, well, thank you all for tuning in, and uh, be sure to stay tuned for more amazing videos from the New Orleans Jazz National Historical Park, and be sure to check out some of the things they have going on with the park service, because there's always something going on, whether online or in the actual park itself. But we'll, we'll see you all again soon. Have a great night.